Hey, God bless you. Welcome to our More Ministries Leadership Class. Thank you for being a part of the More Church. We're super excited that you are able to become a leader. Remember that our mission is abundant life for all. And our vision is that you'll be transformed, stay transformed, and transform the world. God is going to use you in a supernatural way. So please prepare yourself, prepare your heart, prepare your mind. In the name of Jesus, and be ready to become the best leader you can be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you guys, and welcome to lesson two of our leadership classes for more international church. God is moving by his spirit in a powerful way. Now, today's class is what is the purpose of God giving us the Bible? What is the purpose in God giving us the Bible? Now, I want you to just get yourself ready. Pray with me very quickly, and we're going to jump right in. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for the Individuals that are connected to this session, I pray that you will just lead them by your spirit and that you will just guide them in your holy and blessed and glorious name. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Now, what is the purpose of God giving us the Bible? There's a couple of reasons why we need the Holy Scriptures. Now, the Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And in John chapter 8, verse 32. So this is the initial kind of uh, base uh, foundation as to why the scriptures are so important. The scriptures lead us to liberty. Again, the scriptures lead us to liberty. Nothing can make you as free as knowing the truth. The Bible says, he whom the son says free is free indeed. And the Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So there is really nothing that can make you free spiritually Mentally, physically, financially, morally, like the Holy Scriptures. But there are other reasons why God gave us the Bible. And i just like to go through a couple of those reasons. Number one, the Scriptures teach us the divinity of Jesus. The Scriptures teach us the divinity of Jesus. That's number one. Why is that important? Because a lot of people... You know, don't understand that God came in the flesh in the person of Jesus. God the Father wrapped himself in flesh and came to earth in the person of Jesus. And many individuals have believed Jesus just to be a prophet, uh, a powerful teacher, but they don't understand that Jesus is God in the flesh. He's 100% man, but he's also 100% God. And nothing shows you that. There is no book that reveals that more clearly than the Holy Scriptures. In John chapter 20, verse 31, we see this. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing you may have life in his name. And notice what he says. John the Beloved explains to the believers that these scriptures have been written, these Accounts have been written that man may believe that Jesus is not merely a man. He's not merely a prophet. He's not merely a teacher. Jesus is the Christ. That word Christ means God. He is the anointed one. He is the savior of the world. In that by believing, you and I might have life. And so I want you to know that the scriptures, they bring Jesus not only into your heart, but they bring him into his proper place and position for you and I. He is our Savior here, but he's also our Lord. And so the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Watch this. That you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. These have I written to you that believe in this, the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. So the scriptures reveal to us that we have eternal life through the Son, Jesus Christ. And nobody can give you eternal life unless they themselves possess it. And Jesus possess eternal life because he is God. He is divine in every sense of the word. Jesus is totally man, but he is totally God. Number two, the instructions of the scriptures give us spiritual discernment. 
Number two, the instructions of the scriptures of the Bible give you spiritual discernment for holy living and success in everything in God. The holy scriptures, they give us instructions for, for spiritual discernment and holy living and success in every aspect of our life. It gives you total discernment. I want you to think about nothing can show you the way like the Bible can. Nothing can show you the difference between right and wrong like the scriptures can. That's why the enemy has been so interested in removing the Bible from every institution in the world. He's removing it from the schools. He's removed it from the, from the, the courtrooms. He's removed it from, from places of influence. Why? Because the scriptures give you spiritual discernment on what's right and wrong. It teaches you how to be holy. It teaches you how to be righteous. The holy scriptures do that. They instruct you in holy living. Nothing. If you remove the scriptures from mankind, mankind has no standard for morality. He has no standard for right living. He has no standard for how to live with others, how to live with his family. The holy scripture is the literal measuring stick by which all mankind has to run their life if they are looking to please God, if they are looking to live right before God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine. The scriptures bring the doctrine into one's life for profitability. It brings it for you to be profitable. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. God moves you by his spirit through the scriptures. I'm going to repeat that. God moves you. If you want the spirit of God to move in you, you got to know the truth. And the scriptures literally instruct you on how to discern between right and wrong. Number three, the word of God is the standard by which you can judge right and wrong. The word of God is the standard by which you can judge right and wrong. The reason why that's powerful, like I said earlier, is because there is no other judge. There is no other measuring line. There is no one else that can really say what's right and wrong. If you remove the standards of the scripture, man is left to his own. He will behave literally like an animal. We see that now in areas, in places where the scriptures are not following where, you know, the place of women is so derogated, the place of mankind is held to such a, a, a low standard because there is no scripture to uphold. There is no standard by which to live by. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19 and 20 says the following. And when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mur murder, should not, a people seek their God? Don't seek wizards. Don't seek mediums. You can't have a standard of living by seeking witch doctors in witchcraft. There's no way. Should a people not seek their God? We got to seek what God's standard is. Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? That's what people do when they're seeking witches. You go into the dead realm to know about those who are alive. You can't go to the dead realm to know about those who are living. To the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Anybody who seeks those things does not have light in them to discern between right and wrong. Anyone who turns apart from the scriptures and separates themselves from the truth of God has no compass for right and wrong is living their life on a whim. They're living their life without order because the only way for you to truly know what to do is to ask the one who created life for his manual. If you don't get the manual from God, if you don't get it from him, you will not be able to function. You will not be able to operate how you need to operate. And there's no other judge but God. No man can judge you 
No women can judge you. No, nobody can judge you. The only one that has the right standard of judgment without partiality, like the scripture says in, in Acts chapter 10, verse 34, Peter said, now I perceive, I discern that God has no respect to the person. The only judgment that God is using for you and me is his holy word. And the only judgment for you to, and I to know how to live is the word. I want you to think because there's a lot of people getting away from the word of God in this, in this society, in this culture. And there is no other standard for mankind to live by. You will lower yourself to literally animal nature if the scriptures were not guiding us. The reason why mankind does what he does is because the Bible says that the law is written in our heart. That's why you see people that don't necessarily follow the Bible acting morally because the law is written in their heart so that they cannot even deny the truth itself on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, God is going to tell them the only reason you acted morally or the only reason you acted righteous was because the law itself was written in your heart by me when I created you. Number four, why God gave us the Bible? It was given to us for our learning. It was given to us for our learning. The scriptures are given to mankind for their learning. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. For whatever things are written before were written for our learning. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning. That we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That we through the patience and comforts of the scriptures might have hope. God is moving by his spirit through the scriptures. If you want to tap into the spirit of God, if you want to tap into the frequency of heaven, the only way to learn the ways of God, the only way to learn his mindset, the only way to learn his words, the only way to learn his behavior is through the scriptures. It's through the word of God. You've got to make the Bible the primary source that you go to every single day if you're going to be effective. The Bible says... Now, these things were written for our learning. If you really want to be potent, if you really want to be effective, the only way that you can do that is through the, the Holy Scriptures. I want you to think about that. Number five, it was written for our ammunition, training us both in instructions on what to do and warnings on what not to do. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Now, all these things happened to them as example. And they were written for our ammunition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. The end of time is here. And the only way for you and I to be admonished and ammunition is a warning. It is a, it's a sign that is lifted up to tell you, be careful to go this way. Or be careful to do this. Because if you don't, you're going to be effective. You're going to be effective. It is an admonishment to keep us from danger. You and I are admonished to keep from danger. God admonishes us on what to do to keep us from danger. Hallelujah. And so I want you to, I want you to think about that. I want you to see what God has given us the Bible for. If you want to know which way to go, look into the scriptures and it will show you. The scriptures will teach you. It will admonish you. It will lead you. Hallelujah. Number six, the Bible was given to us for our obedience it was given to us for our obedience. Meaning, the Bible makes you obey. And it proves that you love God. It assures you that you love God. The scriptures make us obedient. I don't know how I can say that any more clearly. When you stop reading the Bible just for one week, you will notice yourself start degrading. You will notice that your standard will start getting lower because literally the scriptures prompt obedience out of you and me. The scriptures prompt holiness. It prompts justice. It prompts righteousness inside of you. That's what the Bible says. 
that the Lord told Ezekiel the prophet, eat the scroll that you find. We've got to digest this word. We have to digest it because it literally makes, it makes you obedient. It makes you obey. You stay in the word long enough and all of a sudden you don't want to do nothing wrong. It literally, it, it gives you such a standard by which to live by. It gives you such a standard by which to stand that you don't want to do anything wrong. God moves you to another level. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, that's the one who loves me. He who has my commandments and keeps them. So the word, you got to have it so that you can keep it. You got to have the word so that you can keep it. You cannot keep the word if you don't have it. The word prompts in you obedience. Hallelujah. And as I get ready to close, I want you to think about this. God gave us the Bible. Watch this. God gave us the Bible so that we can be doers and not just hearers of the word. It's closely connected to my other point. It makes you obedient, but God gave us the Bible so that we can be doers, not hearers only of the word. God is pleased by what you do. God is pleased by what you say. The Bible says every word will be brought into judgment. Every action will be brought into judgment. God is pleased. And he gave us the Bible so that we can be doers of the word and not just hearers. James chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed in what he does. God gave us his word so that we can be doers and not just hearers. And there, there's, a, listen, there are multiple reasons why you have to be a doer of the word and not a hearer. But I'm going to just name you a few. The first one is, you were made in the likeness of the word. The Bible says that God is inseparable from his word. And the word became flesh. God is his word. The beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word and God are inseparable. So God is your father. He's my father. So the word is really our father. The word of God is what birthed us. It's what brought us forth. So for you, watch this, to be a child of the word is for you to have the nature of the word. For you to be a child of the word is for you to have the nature of the word. So whenever you don't do the word, you are actually, that's what it says right here, you are forgetting what kind of man you are. You are forgetting who you really are, which is a child of the word, which is in the nature of the word. And so as you are listening to me, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about how God has entrusted us to be called his children. We have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God. We have a new nature now. And that new nature is to bless. It is to guide every single person that gets into this word. The Bible says if you be a doer and not a forgetful hearer, you will be blessed in everything that you do. You will be blessed in everything that you do. From this day forward, as you get into this word and you understand the purpose of God giving us the Bible, you're going to be blessed in everything that you do. Very quickly, I want you to remember these things. God's word has been given to bless us. God's word has been given to us to bless us. Don't allow anything to stop the blessing of the word of God for you. Because... You're distracted because you're doing too many things, because things are calling your attention. Don't allow that because it's taking away the blessing that God created for you. It's taking away the blessing that God established for you. From this moment forward, you are not going to be a forgetful hearer, but you're going to be a doer of the word. And from this time 
on where you are going to be blessed in all that you do. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. I can't wait to see you on our next segment. Lesson number three. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. Thank you so much for listening in and receiving this leadership class for more international ministries and being a part of the more church. God bless you. And remember to be prayerful as you receive the word of God. The Bible says that we are to seek, we are to knock, we are to seek the presence of God in a supernatural way. And so as you finish the lesson, now go and pray, meditate on it so that you can make your way prosperous and successful in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.